Hello, welcome to Ardwood and welcome to our reindeer talk. We'll be telling you a little bit about the reindeer here at Wildwood, so let's introduce the family. We currently have four reindeer here, so it's a small group. Uh, over on my right, your left, we have Kenny. He's the largest of the reindeer, he's the only male. So to the side of Kenny, we've got Ivy. She's just recently lost her antlers. More about that in a few minutes. To the side of her is her younger sister, May. May is the youngest of the reindeer. And way over on the far right we have Holly. She's the mother to both Ivy and little May. We do get people asking why we've actually got reindeer here at Wildwood. Although you don't find reindeer wild in Britain today, they did used to live here back in the last Ice Age. If you were here about 100,000 years ago, you would have seen herds of reindeer moving through southern Britain, accompanied by things like mammoths and woolly rhinos. Today, if you want to see them in the wild, you have to go around the Arctic Circle. They're found pretty much anywhere in the northern part of northern Europe, into Russia, and into North America. But over in North America, they're known as caribou. Same animal, different names. To make things more complicated, you find them living in different areas. Woodland reindeer, as the name suggests, they live mainly in the woodland. Tundra reindeer, they live up, out in the open, uh, on the sort of grassland areas. You do see differences in them, partly in things like the fact that the woodland reindeer tend to be a little smaller and slimmer, and the fact that the tundra reindeer tend to move around in big herds. Reindeer are brilliantly adapted for life in the cold. They have a whole host of special features that help them. Everything from their coats to their antlers and especially their feet. As she's moving around behind me, you might actually hear an odd noise. As the reindeer move, their feet make a loud clicking sound. This is not an accident, it's deliberate. There's a special tendon that runs down the back of their foot. As they walk, it makes a loud clicking sound. And it means that if reindeer are in a snowstorm, they won't be able to see each other, but they will be able to hear each other. That keeps them in co contact, they don't get lost. The hooves are multi-purpose, not just for walking on, they actually splay out deliberately to spread the weight of the reindeer. They act as paddles. Reindeer are very good at swimming. And they change according to the season. In the summertime, the hoof has a special spongy pad underneath it to make it easier to walk on sticky mud. In the wintertime, the pad reduces and the edges get sharper and this helps them to walk on ice and to also kick their way through ice and frozen snow to get to food. As you can probably spot, uh, Holly here is eating branches. Reindeer are strict plant eaters. In the wild, they'll eat pretty much anything in the way of vegetation. So grasses, sedges, leaves, mosses. And in the winter time, lichen. They're one of the few big animals that can actually eat lichen and digest it. If you notice she's deliberately chewing the twigs that's actually to get the bark and the lichen off. If you look at Holly's face you may notice that she has velvet soft fur on her nose. That's another special adaptation. It means that even in the snow and the ice, the reindeer can put their noses down to the ground in order to feed. The coat, well, the coat keeps them warm. In the winter time, they have a thicker coat than summer. Every one of the hairs is hollow to trap the warmth. And as you can see, it's quite light in color, so that helps for camouflage. There's something very unusual about the antlers of a reindeer. They're the only known type of deer 
where both the males and the females have antlers. With most deer, it's just the males. And the reason why they have the antlers, that's for fighting. As you can see, Holly has antlers. The reason being, they actually use the antlers to sweep away snow to get to food that's been covered. Again, things like mosses and lichens. The females tend to have much smaller antlers. They also lose them at different times of year. As you can see, Holly still has her antlers in the spring. She'll be losing hers probably in the next few days. Ivy, who's up on the ridge, lost hers last week. But Big Kenny, he actually lost his antlers before Christmas. There's two reasons. First of all, the male reindeer's antlers are much larger and heavier. You want to get rid of them as soon as possible. Second reason, because the girls keep theirs over the winter, they can actually push the males away from food. Quite often, the females will have at least one calf with them over the winter time. That means they can make sure their babies get enough food. As I said to you earlier, you can't make this stuff up. We do sometimes get people asking, how do they cope with the summer? The truth is that when they're up in the Arctic, reindeer have to cope with not just summertime, but up to three months of continuous sunshine. Because they're up at the poles, they have very long seasons. So three months of darkness, eventually three months of light. They have summertime coats that are much shorter and lighter than the winter coats. And they can even see parts of the light spectrum that we can't. So here at Wildwood, no worries at all. They tend to sit down in the shade, though, as you can see on a day like this, spring sunshine, they're happily sunbathing. A lot of the animals at Wildwood are under threat in the wild. It's nice to say that the reindeer are not currently seen as being at risk. The herd here, well, Little May was born in May of last year, hence her name. So we're very pleased to say that we're helping to protect the long-term future of these beautiful and fascinating animals.